We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio Talking Liberty segment. We're very fortunate to have with us Mr. Scott Cosenza, Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor, and we're discussing today the wrap-up of the Trump trial in New York City. Now, Scott, thanks for being here, first of all. And Here's Mark. Secondly, and possibly even more important than finding out how you are today, is the case in New York against Donald Trump for the misfilings. This has essentially wrapped up now. No more witnesses coming in. Sorry? I said the hush money scandal. The hush money scandal, as a lot of people want to call it, which... It's not a scandal, right? There's nothing to do with hush money. There's, there's no. I, I hush think money a scandal. casual reader of the headlines, if you didn't peel just even one layer deep, you would think that he was charged with illegally paying off somebody for something, which is totally not the case. Um, in fact, the only person who came close to kind of infringing on the law in that area, I think, would be Stormy Daniels and her lawyer, Mr. Davidson. Uh, for uh, getting a little bit close to blackmail with uh, with with their early negotiations in the uh, in the thing, but no, Trump is charged with the way he uh, accounted for his uh, reimbursing Michael Cohen for a hundred and thirty thousand dollar payment he made to Stormy Daniels. Alvin Bragg said that instead of writing down, this was a reimbursement of a confidential payment to secure confidentiality with respect to a certain story that she wanted to talk about. Uh, Instead, they just said it was for legal services. And somehow that yields criminality and a felony if you tie it into a federal crime, which Donald Trump was never prosecuted for. That's a bit complicated, but just to reiterate, it's that the, the prosecution of Donald Trump in New York State Court, which is where he is now, depends on the jurors finding that he also violated a federal law, which he was never charged with breaking. Or you could say it's just all to frustrate Donald Trump's presidential aspirations, and Alvin Bragg is using the power that he has to try to do that. That's something that I believe, but uh, it may not be true. Maybe he's somehow (laughs) believing that this is an actual search for truth and justice. Again, bringing charges, I think it's, is it 11 years after the, uh, the the uh, the dalliance alleged and six mm. years after the payoff. Anyway, um, oh, that's the other thing too. The accounting for the the payment was made after the election itself. So that's another wrinkle in the in the plan to charge him with kind of interference well, that, with an that's election. That's quite a fascinating thing because, uh, and correct me if I've made any mistakes in my thing here. So uh, Donald Trump is charged with first. Filing the the hush money payment as a legal expense, which is a misdemeanor, and it's a state level crime. I think that's correct. Now it could be a misdemeanor, Mark, if right. he was convicted of it. Okay, sure. yeah. Uh, now the only reason that this has been bumped up to a felony charge is because Alvin Bragg claims that uh, he did it with the. It, intending the furtherance of another crime. And in this case, that crime would be to impact the outcome of the presidential election. Now, this is the part that really blows me away. If indeed Trump is guilty of misfiling this thing to impact the outcome of the presidential election, surely, unless he has a Trump Tower time machine, he would have had to have filed that paperwork before the election, not after the election, because once the election's taken place, it can't make a difference, right? At some point, it becomes difficult for me as an attorney to pretend that this is anything other than a a political witch hunt. And this is where we are with this part of the conversation. Yes, what you said, it's preposterous. It makes no sense. The only, here's the thing, it's the only thing that makes sense when you look at the facts that have been alleged by the New York, by Alvin Bragg, who is uh, the Manhattan DA, the only thing that kind of, as you look at the case, why besides getting him politically would this man bring this charge? It is a massive expense for the office to mm-hmm. undertake. We learned in testimony uh, in Michael Cohen's uh, direct and especially his cross-examination that he stole 
at least $30,000, both from Trump and uh, a company called Redfinch. Basically, he said to uh, the Trump organization when they were delineating what, what they were going to pay him out for the, the, the settlement for Stormy Daniels and some other fees uh, and a bonus, he said, oh, you owe Redfin, uh, Finch uh, $50,000. So pay it to me and I'll get it to them because the CEO is a friend of mine. I want to make sure that he gets all that he's due. And then Cohen never paid it. He gave him twenty k, twenty thousand dollars in a brown paper bag to the uh, <laughs> to the CEO. And yeah, you, know, you think about this is his friend. He's supposed to be taken care mm -hmm. of. So he stole both and committed fraud, both from the Trump organization, who he extracted those funds from, and from the Redfinch people, who they were rightly owed that extra thirty thousand dollars, and he stole that uh, from them. And D. A. Alvin Bragg knew about that. And didn't punish this theft of over $30,000, but is punishing, trying to punish with th over 30 felonies, Donald Trump for writing down a different thing than, than what the payment was actually for, by the way. And this is the, <laughs> the, the, the extra part about it, which no one relied on. It's not like the state of New York needed the correct information for some issue that mm -hmm. Donald Trump was avoiding. It was just... He didn't want this publicly disclosed, which is, of course, what, what about the payoff was about <laughs> in the first place. So there was no like, where's the victim, right? Who, who relied on this to their detriment, this filing of, of how money was accounted for? No one. I, I think that's an issue that uh, is really animating a, a large swath of the public, not the whole public, because there are, are many in the public who believe Donald Trump is at least guilty of something. And whether it's this or something else, they feel that he He's deserves charged in seven trials. Mark, how could he not be guilty of anything? Yeah, absolutely. Is, uh, um, yeah. But that's the thing that really, I think, sticks in in the clear thinkers. Jaw craw, as it were, that's what really sticks is, is the idea that. Michael Cohen admits to stealing from multiple victims, and yet the person that is is in the uh, in the defendant's chair it is not somebody who's admitted right. stealing and so it kind of brings the victim to survivor the, the victim survivor of michael cohen's crime the victim survivor of michael cohen's crimes um it, it really brings to the forefront the idea that what is alvin bragg chasing here is he looking for is he is he applying justice equally as he sees it in his role as the manhattan district attorney well let's add this to the pile this is the first time anybody's ever been prosecuted for, for this kind of crime. So uh, it's a novel application of the law. Alvin Bragg mm. <laughs> was just moved to justice for the first time ever to apply the law this way for this particular defendant. But it has, according to Mr. Bragg, nothing whatsoever to do with politics. Well, let's, let's dig it just a little, uh, another one layer deal. Let's peel back that next, mm -hmm. that next onion skin here. Now, uh, don't, the the furtherance of the crime, which is needed to make this into a felony, was that uh, Donald Trump allegedly did the misfiling in order to keep uh, to impact the outcome of the election. It was an illegal election yeah. campaign expenditure. Sure. That's what that's what he would say. Now, the people who actually oversee election campaign finance the federal election and fraud. Yeah. they actually looked at this case and decided there wasn't one didn't they yes that's right so why does mr bragg know better than that entire department well because if he listens to uh and and follows the path that the federal election commission and uh the justice department took that means he would not be able to prosecute donald trump for crimes in a manhattan courtroom and take him away from the campaign trail for weeks and compel his attendance and also subject him to criminal liability. Donald Trump basically, you know, if you heard everything I just said, you might think it's preposterous and I think it is, but that doesn't mean that Donald Trump may not still be convicted of these crimes. That could still happen. So well, th that's as far as Alvin Bragg is concerned, I think it's all a win. Um, yep. The oh, I just want to add one other uh, factual point, which is that it's not even that Donald Trump was able to deduct this expense because of how he accounted for it and he wouldn't otherwise be able to. So there's not even like a tax component to this, which some people might think there is. This is a legitimate deductible expense 
And it would have been deductible no matter how, how it was labeled. It was a valid expense for the organization. So, um, so that's the only reason why I think that the Mr. Bragg is following, uh, you know, not, not following the, the, the guidance of the federal government and saying this is not a crime. But if you want to play a devil's advocate, and I will, not all crimes are prosecuted. It is the burden of prosecutors to only bring cases that they uh, believe they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt and that the evidence reflects that. And so federal prosecutors may say, well, he, we believe he did do it, but we don't have the evidence to prove it. And that's why we never brought a case. So that, that's a possibility as well. Well, let, let's look at that, that burden of proof. So it's supposed to be beyond a reasonable doubt with a unanimous verdict coming down from the 12 person jury and that's yes. due to come in this week after defense and prosecution make their final arguments for the court uh one more question for you scott very quickly if i may do you think donald trump can politically survive a felony conviction if it comes to that wow that is a tough question to answer i'm gonna plead uh, no contest i have no idea i'm not a predictor like that which okay and scott casenza he pleads the fifth. Thanks for being mm -hmm. here, Scott. Cheers. Thank you, Mark. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.